Hi guys and welcome to another episode of House of Health podcast. I'm very excited for this episode because in this episode I have a good friend, a consultant radiologist, Dr. Sharon Madhwani, who has a special interest in abdominal radiology. Sharon, thank nice you very much you. for having uh, b- being on our show. Thank you for having me. Pleasure Great. To be here. So for this podcast, we will be busting some myths around ultrasound. So the viewers have sent us some questions and I'll be firing those questions Excellent. at you, Sharon. Right. So let's start with the first question. Ultrasound is unsafe due to radiation exposure. Is that true? Yeah, so it, it's, it's not true and I'll explain. So ultrasound is part of the electromagnetic spectrum of waves, uh, of which X-ray is part of that same spectrum as well, but it's a different segment. Ultrasound itself doesn't have any ionizing radiation, so it's a very safe thing to do, almost causes no damage whatsoever. With any of these waves that we use to apply to patients, there is a theoretical risk that we increase the thermal energy we deliver. So the only energy that will be delivered through ultrasound will be thermal energy, and it may heat tissues up, but it's in such a small scale that you generally wouldn't notice that at all. That's great, thank you. Right, so next question, which again, I was also not sure about was some people think that the ultrasound can only be used in pregnancy. Is mm. that true? I mean, it's a fantastic tool for pregnancy to following uh, to follow to follow a pregnancy to to make sure that everything is developing okay. But it is a tool that can be used literally anywhere you can put it. So if you have a a joint uh, injury it can be used to look at the soft tissues around the joints and the bones um, if you've got an abdominal injury or pain we can use it to look for what might be the source of the pain um, it really is a mechanism where you can deliver ultrasounds the ultrasounds reflect off the structure you want to look at and come back to that probe and, uh, and, and provide an image so it's really useful for anything and that's one of the things I love about ultrasound is that it is so versatile you can use it for any part of the body whatsoever Great, thank you. Next question, is this a myth or a fact? It asks us, does ultrasound always provide immediate answers? Yeah, so that's a really good question. Um, One thing I would say is, because it's a a handheld device and it's used by a, a person, an operator, it's only as good as that person that's using it. So it's really important when you get having an ultrasound that you you make sure that you're getting someone qualified that really knows what they're looking at to use it. Otherwise, you'll end up with a report that doesn't make sense and, and so maybe a, uh, an examination report that doesn't answer the questions you've, you you want to answer. Uh, so it's it, it isn't always uh, the, the, the uh, test that will answer all the questions. It, it, it sometimes is the only test you need but what's most important is that the right person does the scan. That's great. What about ultrasound and diagnosing different conditions? Does ultrasound, can it diagnose all conditions? Yeah, no, so it's a great tool, like I say, but it is a small device. And in doing so, in being a small device, um, you can only apply it to certain areas and look at certain areas at once. When we consider different types of scans, CT scans, MRI scans, for example, they look at a bigger area um, in total at the same time, whereas an ultrasound is a much more focused examination. So you're putting it in the place that you want to look at, and you may not see the other structures around. So it's not going to diagnose all problems. There are other scenarios where it will be better than CT or MRI, for example. So to this day, ultrasound is still the highest resolution test we have in imaging. It gives you the most detailed images we can get. Uh, That's better than CT, better than MRI. Uh, So we can see the small stuff really well with ultrasound. Um, But but the trade-off is that it's looking at a small area. So it won't always see exactly what we need to see. A CT scan may be a better test, an MRI scan may be a better test, but these are in different situations. Um, One example is gallstones. So we know that in in gallstone disease to detect stones in the gallbladder, ultrasound is fantastic. It it will pick it up in more than 90% of cases, whereas a CT scan can only pick it up in around 10% of cases. So that's one example where ultrasound is better than the other test, but it really does depend on what we're trying to look for. Sure, no, that explains it really well. And what about fasting? Does everyone need to fast before the scan? Yes, that's a good question. So it's a common common sort of uh, question that we, we get asked when we're doing ultrasounds. 
particularly about the abdomen, the 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 reason to fast needs to relate to the problem that you have. So if we're looking for uh, gallstones, we'll go back to that example, um, then actually what we need is the gallbladder to be nice and relaxed. And we know that the gallbladder contracts when when you've eaten fats in particular, but any meal really. So we're not going to see the gallbladder well if you've just had a meal. And we tend to ask people to fast for at least six hours to make sure that gallbladder is nice and relaxed and we can see what's inside, especially if there's stones. Now, if we're doing an ultrasound to check, for example, for the kidneys or for the bladder, then there's no point fasting for that because actually we're not looking at anything to do with the gastrointestinal tract. We're looking at the kidneys and the bladder that are completely independent to that. We may ask you in that instance to, to make sure you drink lots and fill your bladder beforehand so you feel like you need to go to the toilet so we can see the bladder really well, but not necessarily fasting in that instance. So there's different preparations that we would use for different types of examinations. That's great. Anything else you'd like to talk about on the ultrasound side of things? Is this your favorite modality? It is. It's, it's hugely my favorite modality. It's one of the oldest modalities we've got after an x-ray. Um, and the thing I like about it the most is that um, you have a patient right there with you, whereas with CT, with MRI, with x-ray, um, the doctor very rarely sees that patient at that moment. And the thing about ultrasound is that when we examine you, we can talk to you, we can press on bits uh, that hurt, and we can see what exactly lies under there right there and then. And we can get a really good integrated assessment of what is going on, what we can see in terms of your symptoms, and what we can relate to that as opposed to a CT or an MRI where we're, we're looking at anatomy, we're looking at structures, but we don't have that clinical side of things that you're giving to us right in front of us. So I personally, it's my favorite modality. That's great. Well, thank you very much for coming on our podcast. Um, this is all from this episode of House of Health podcast. I'll see you next time with a different guest, with a different topic. Thank you.